Hello, welcome to our YouTube channel. As I have promised uh, last time that uh, we are going to uh, give you various aspects of uh, the baller system. I have started one section where we are going to talk about the operation various uh, uh, approach or rather the analytical approach towards uh, baller operation. Uh, this is another section which I am starting that is uh, how to prevent the baller tube failure. Now uh, I am going to uh, create and release uh, a number of short videos in this channel in due course of time. But again the, mm. the approach would be the same one which I have shared last time with the operation practices and that is the, uh, the analytical approach. Okay? Now the question is that uh, what exactly do we do after a baller tube fails? Whenever there is a tube failure, very honestly speaking, what we do is we identify the tube failure, we create an access to the tube, we cut the tube, we replace the tube as soon as possible, as early as possible time, and we bring back the system into operation. That is what we do generally after a volatile failure. It is only when there is frequent or more number of failures, multiple failures in a specific zone and the failures are similar. Then people tend to, you know, start digging why this is happening uh, every time here and the similar failures, right? So usually we send a uh, tube sample for metallurgical analysis, a metallurgical laboratory where they will conduct various uh, tests, will give you a very nice report showing the microstructure analysis, the original uh, material metallurgy specification, whether it is matching with the OEM specification or not. And finally, what they are going to find out conclusively is the damage mechanism. They are going to identify the damage mechanism under which the tube has failed, whether it was it has failed due to uh, erosion or due to corrosion or due to overheating. If it is overheating, then whether it is a short term overheating or a long term overheating, such thing would be given there. Then what we do? Suppose we, we come to understand, okay, it's because of uh, overheating, then we inspect the nearby zone tubes, right? We inspect the nearby zone tubes and try to understand whether the indication of the similar type of damage mechanisms are there or not. And if we find it, we replace the tube so that it is not going to fail in the near future. Right? We call this uh, a preventive maintenance practice. But does it uh, prevent a tube failure? Have we removed the root cause? The one cause, the one mistake which was actually leading to this damage mechanisms of these tubes. Have we identified it and removed it? Answer is no. In 90% cases, it doesn't happen like that. This is the practice, okay. We, we try to avoid similar failure in the near future. So a tube is already damaged under the same damage mechanism. We find the indication, we remove it. If I, if I think what should be done, then, okay, from the root to the, from the failure to the prevention, first is yes, definitely the damage mechanism, but once after the damage mechanism is identified, then we need to find out what is causing this damage mechanism, right? So that is actually called the root cause. Once the root cause is found out, then we have to identify, okay, what corrective actions should we take to remove this root cause and then a proper implementation of that corrective actions. This is again very serious. Now, suppose you want to take a corrective actions to, you know, uh, take care of one particular problem, it might lead to another set of problem, right? So, correct mechanisms of uh, removal of this root cause and a correct implementation of it. Now that is the right way of uh, preventing a tube failure. 
Now, when I talk about identification of root cause and identification of the corrective measures, these two are not so easy. In fact, uh, any failure investigation uh, agencies who are actually conducting this type of failure investigations, they are not likely to give you this. Right? They might suggest that yes, there is a high temperature prevailing in this, but why that high temperature is prevailing? What actions are to be taken to reduce the temperature? Those sort of things are not going to come from them because they do not know your system. This actually has to come from the, the person who is dealing with the operation of that system, who knows the system very, very thoroughly. They can only identify this root cause correctly and they can only identify the correct actions to take care of this root cause. Now, the question is, okay, if I do it, why should I wait for the tube to fail because these are happening post motor after the tube has failed then we have started looking into this why cannot we think of uh, capturing the uh, condition or rather uh, correcting the condition before a tube actually fails i would call that a proper prevention right now to do that what we need to do is what we need to look from the failure to the root cause what are the what are the roots for that now first of all this problem starts the one which we call root cause is basically a mistake a mistake uh, that can happen in design for example uh, certain sets of super readers are having more area than it was desired and it is picking up more heat, right? It can happen uh, during uh, erection. Number of such mistakes, which ultimately becomes a root cause of a, uh, a recurring failure, it happens during uh, the erection of this component, the boiler system. It can definitely happen during operation, right? Certain operation conditions we are not uh, maintaining proper that may create a situation where there will be a failure. Now, when there is a root cause, there is a problem that creates a condition in a system which is not desirable for the component, right? We call it an undesirable condition. Undesirable condition in the sense uh, high uh, gas temperature, high steam temperature and correspondingly high metal temperature. It can be high velocity of flue gas which will definitely increase the erosion. It can come from the water side. Certain, certain uh, uh, chemical parameters are uh, not maintained properly, which is ultimately leading to a corrosion condition in the system, right? So that is an undesirable condition, which is going to start a damage mechanism. That is going to initiate a damage mechanism, right? Now, damage mechanisms are very seldom can lead to a failure instantaneously. It's very, very rare. There are very few damage mechanisms. Yes, there are few damage mechanisms which are very aggressive. For example, secondary uh, steam jet erosion. That is when a particular superator coil fails, then the surrounding tubes are under imminent danger of failure because that is going to create a very fast erosion damage mechanism, right? Now that kind of damage mechanisms are rare. Usually, a damage mechanism is going to take time to lead to finally failure, right? When the damage mechanism is uh, complete, then it is going to lead to a failure. Now, uh, if I want to capture before the failure occurs, so first thing is I can look for the damage mechanism. So, okay. For this, I need to know, okay, what kind of damage mechanism is possible in this particular area. Right? So, if I know that yes, this kind of damage mechanism is possible, I look for those damage mechanisms before a tube fails and then I do the same thing, I replace the tube before it fails. Yes, I am preventing a tube failure before a tube failure has happened. But better even, this damage mechanism has been initiated by a, an undesirable condition. Right? So, 
why shouldn't I look for those undesirable conditions in our system? And if we can think of a corrective action which can reduce this undesirable condition, remove this undesirable condition, the damage mechanism is not going to start at all. Right? So that is the approach we need to understand. So if I want to prevent a boiler failure, what should I do? Right? Basically, simply speaking, a boiler tube fails. Why? It fails because it is working under a condition which it cannot endure. The strength is not enough to endure a condition under which it is working. That condition has been created by us, either by a designer or during the erection or during the operation or during even the maintenance. So, in order to prevent a ball tube failure, if I want to identify, before it actually happens, if I want to identify the indications, I should know few things. First of all, as I told you, the conditions under which it is working is beyond its durability capacity, right? So I should know what are the adverse conditions under a boiler's box and under it, which our boiler system is working. Which are the conditions which are adverse and we should know which adverse condition is going to lead to which kind of a damage mechanism, right? And then the questions of durability, yes, we should also know what is the metallurgy that are being used in this boiler components and most importantly what is the limitation of this metallurgy here comes a very uh, very common myth since steel is used for all the tubes right and we know steel is very strong we tend to feel that okay steel can take care of many adverse conditions that happens to be a complete myth Boiler is working with a metallurgy which are barely having the capacity to withstand the condition under which it is working. Now this understanding should be very very thoroughly there with every operation and maintenance engineers as well as inspection engineers. And we should also know that what are the indications that is going to suggest that yes there is a possibility that the limitations can be bridged. That means it, the condition is going beyond the durability capacity of this components, right? Now this is the logical, this is the analytical approach to identify the system condition from the indications, from the parameters, from the analysis, from the uh, inspection reports that yes, it shows that there is a possibility of the condition is being bridged and then we can take preemptive actions to take care of that condition, to correct that condition, and then we can actually prevent a tube failure, right? And most importantly, uh, we should definitely know uh, what corrective actions is required to be taken. For example, if I tell you that, uh, okay, we are having an <coughs> overheating failure. <coughs> now this overheating failure is because high gas temperature. Now this high gas temperature in the upper furnace zone is because of a delayed combustion condition in the system. In order to remove the cause, I need to control the delayed combustion system. Right? I need to control the delayed combustion condition. I need to take the combustion at the right zone. Now that is the corrective measures and I should know how to take that. Right? Now uh, these are the basic approaches with which I'm going to deal with few scenarios uh, uh, of uh, different types of boiler tube failures and I'm going to share these videos uh, in, in, the, in the forthcoming uh, short videos I'm going to share under this section. Right? We actually uh, conduct a uh, uh, few technical workshops on this. In fact, I'm going to conduct a workshop uh, in this uh, May 24 in Baroda. Uh, the training uh, would be on prevention of boiler pressure bars failure but uh, the theme is that you can only prevent those which you can predict right so how to predict what are the 
parameters to look at, what are the indications to look at, and then of course how to correct that condition, right? So the detail of these workshops you can find uh, whenever it is conducted uh, at our website that is indiawaller.net and uh, I am going to share as I told you few short videos on this in due to course if you have any queries you can always uh, ask me that in the comment section if you have any suggestions also to uh, you know uh, uh, cover a particular type of failures that also can be done in due course of time. So with that, uh, I would also give you a hint that you can subscribe to this channel to get the uh, intimations of the forthcoming videos easily, right? So thank you very much. See you then. Bye-bye.